Well, go ahead and take out your copy of God's Word today. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. We'll be over just for a moment in 3 John 1, 2. And we've been talking about this idea of living, living holistically, that we are way more holistic than we think we are. So Jesus says in Mark chapter 12, when the teacher of the law came and said, Jesus, out of not just the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, but out of all of those 613 Levitical laws, what is the most important. Jesus doesn't hesitate. He said, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and therefore love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. So we've been talking about that even though we are separate entities, heart, mind, soul, and strength, that Jesus is connecting that to the wholeness of the Godhead. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three persons, but one entity of the Godhead, one person of the Godhead. But you can't know God the Father without going through Jesus Christ the Son. And the Bible says that you can't know Jesus unless the Spirit draws us to Jesus. And that Jesus doesn't live to glorify himself. He glorifies the Father. But the Father is the one who sent the Son. And the Son is the one who sent the Spirit. And the Spirit is always glorifying Jesus. Right? So you can't have one without the other. You can't have the, the Father without the Spirit. You can't have the Spirit without the Father. Well, that's what Jesus says, is that three persons in one, and because we are created in the image of God, we are separate entities, heart, mind, soul, and strength, but we are one. And so that's why Jesus says that we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, not just part of it, but all of our heart, and then all of our mind, all of our mind and then all of our soul our soul our emotions and then finally all of our strength all of our strength and you can't separate these right so go ahead and and remove the orange liquid from here or go ahead and remove the the pink liquid from here you you can't here's what the enemy wants to do the enemy is trying to distract us so he can fragment our lives and fragmented distraction leads to fragmentation fragmentation leads to fracturing and I want you to watch this. This is going to sound nuanced, but I want you to hear this. I think Jesus would actually be confused by terms like mindfulness. Have you heard this term? I think Jesus would be confused by terms like soul care. I think Jesus would be confused by terms, this is really going to sound weird, and I know you're going to be mad at me, by terms like spiritual formation. Why? Because you can't have one without the other. Does that make sense? It's not that, it's not that mental health isn't important. It's just that mental health is connected to our heart. It's not that spiritual formation isn't important. It's just that spiritual form formation is connected to our emotions and our body. Mindfulness. Listen, y'all, you don't want mindfulness without Jesus. I've seen your mind. It isn't good. <laughs> I know what happens in this mind without Jesus. I've seen your soul, right? You can care for your soul. By the way, soul care without Jesus, there's another word for that. It's called selfishness. But that's not, a, that's not popular to say, so I'll just move on quickly. But like all of, all of these, right? Like I'm kind of kidding, right? Like yes, care for your soul, but it, it's connected to your body. And how we care for our body. So, so Pastor Steve, in Pentecostal circles, we don't like to talk about love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and then, and then we'll get back to more spiritual stuff, right? So as, Penteco as Pentecostals, we love a couple of things. We love a good move of the Holy Spirit, and we love fried chicken. <laughs> like, we like to, we like to eat, <laughs> Pastor, let's preach about Jesus. Don't be, don't be stepping on my toes. But, but I got to preach this whole scripture. I got to preach the whole scripture. So the enemy wants us to live distracted, fragmented, and fractured. But Jesus wants you to live healed and whole. And I believe with all of my heart, I believe healing over your soul. I believe healing over your mind. I believe healing over your body. I believe that the enemy has been doing some great work fracturing families, fracturing churches, fracturing people, fracturing minds. But that God wants to bring healing and wholeness. 
how we, how we care for our body matters. Yeah, the 830 gave as many amens as you did on that, but it's, tr it's true whether you believe it or not. Can I, can I, walk, you, can I walk you through this? Listen, this, <laughs> I'll just say it from the front. This message is not to make anybody feel bad. Um, I'm the worst offender. Just be uh, Miss, Miss Mary Ann. So Pastor Bill's wife decided to give us apple cake, and she said that you have to have ice cream with apple cake, and who am I to disobey? I'm, <laughs> respect, respect my elders and, and listen. And, and uh, <laughs> so I, I may have had several pieces this week. I may have, I may have listen, all of, all of this, all of this is just to help. Let me, let me, let me uh, say this, and then I'll give you the five things. Third John 1, 2 says this. In all things... This is John talking to the church. In all things, I would that you be in health and prosper, even as your soul prospers. So Jesus wants you to be so on fire spiritually that he wants your body to be healthy too. Amen. Amen. So let's go through this. How we care for our body matters. Number one, God made the physical body. If God made it, he declared it good. Can you say amen? God made the physical body. There was a heresy called Gnosticism that actually said that everything that is spiritual was good and everything that is physical, all of physical matter was bad. That's a heresy. God made the physical world. He made our physical bodies. Number two, Jesus came in a physical body. There was another heresy called Arianism that said that Jesus didn't come in a physical body. You say, Pastor, well, does that really matter? It absolutely matters because if Jesus did not come in the flesh, then number one, God is a liar because he said that Jesus did come in the flesh and you're not saved. Because Jesus had to come in the flesh to be the second, the fullness of the second Adam and be crucified in the flesh so that our flesh and our soul and our spirit and all of us could be redeemed. So Jesus came in a physical body. Jesus was resurrected in a physical body. He ate food. We're going to eat in heaven. Can you say amen? The disciples touched his hand and feet. Number four, we will live eternally in a glorified physical body. I want to emphasize glorified, wrinkles gone in the name of Jesus, hairlines restored in the name of Jesus. I see it all. And number five, Jesus tells us that part of the most important commandment on the planet is to love the Lord our God with all of our strength. Each year, near, nearly 900,000 Americans die prematurely from the five leading causes of death, yet 20 to 40% of all of those could be prevented, according to a study that, uh, from Center of, for Disease Control and Prevention. Matthew 11, the, the verse we read last week, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. Not just your spiritual life, you'll recover your whole life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn from the unforced rhythms of grace. See, when God created us, he created natural rhythms in three areas. And these are the three areas that we're going to look at. Eating, sleeping, and moving. And there are natural rhythms that God created when he put us together that if we live according to those rhythms, then you're going to be better spiritually. You're going to have more spiritual any energy. Your emotions are going to be better. Your mindset is going to be better. But it begins with this. Let's start with eating. Let's get this one's the most convicting, so let's get it out of the way. Three God designed rhythms for us to live at our physical best eating, eating. So do you remember the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal? Let me tell it to you real quick. So there was King Ahaz and Queen Jezebel. Uh, uh, Jezebel, the, the spiritual condition of the nation was like at its lowest. It was, it was wicked. Every kind of sin, every kind of detestable practice you could imagine was going on. And Elijah thought, well, I'm the only one that's living for God. And God says, no, you're not. You, I've, I've reserved people. I've reserved a remnant. God always has a remnant. And so God challenges 
challenges the prophets of Baal to this contest. And so they build two altars, and he says, all right, prophets of Baal, if you call down fire from Baal, and if Baal sends fire, then we'll all serve Baal, but then I'll call down fire from Yahweh, the one true God, and if God sends fire, then we're all going to serve God. And so the prophets of Baal built their altar, and they prayed, and they prayed, and Elijah taunted them, and he made fun of them, and he was sarcastic to them. Don't you kind of low-key love Elijah sometimes? And, and, and so Elijah was, and he's like, oh, maybe your God's using the bathroom. Yell louder. And, and they were like, they were like cutting themselves, and they were doing all of these things, and fire didn't come. And Elijah moved the situation from difficult to impossible. He took water and doused it on the altar, and he said, oh, God of heaven, God of fire, come. Fire is not optional. And fire fell, and the fire consumed the sacrifice, and the fire consumed the wood and the stones and all of the water because when fire from heaven falls, it begins to consume everything in our lives, in our cities, whether we like it or not. Fire of God come and consume us. And so that was a pretty good Sunday. And, and, and so Elijah won, and Elijah said, we are serving God, and, and this major spiritual victory, but right after that, Y'all, right after that, Elijah didn't put on his Instagram story, the power of God fell. Two things happened to Elijah. He wanted to quit ministry, and he actually wanted to take his own life. It's crazy, right? Like, I know you've never wanted to quit stuff, but Elijah, this amazing man of God, he wanted to walk out on everything that God had just done. And here was God's solution. So God took him away into the wilderness by a cave, by a brook. He sent some ravens to bring him food, and he let Elijah sleep. Hear your pastor today. Sometimes when the devil's after you, sometimes you need to come to this altar and have people lay hands on you. Sometimes, sometimes you need to find your prayer closet and, and pray through. But sometimes when the devil's after you, you need a snack and a nap. Go ahead, and, go ahead and tell the person beside you, don't wake me up to this afternoon. When I'm on my couch, Jesus is working in my life. Go ahead and tell them that. Your kids have radar that they can tell when you fell, you're sleeping, don't they? They have radar. Our, our eating and our sleeping affects our spiritual stamina. If you heard the saying, you are what you eat, it was first mentioned 1826 when a French author wrote, tell me what you eat, and I will tell you what you are. Listen, let me give all of, all of this stuff, let me just give a, a couple of practical action steps. I would, I would throw, you can go, like there's a million diets out there, right? There's a million, all, all of that stuff. Some of it's probably fine, some of it's not. Here, let me just throw up a, throw out, throw up. <laughs> let, me not do, let me not do that. Let me throw out. <laughs> let me throw out a couple of suggestions. We're talking about rhythms, right? Natural rhythms about living the way that God designed us to live. So if God made it, let's eat that. And if man processed it, let's not eat as much of that. Yeah, I know, I know, because I like the, <laughs> I know. Is, is cinnamon toast crunch God made? Because I, I, I feel like it is. I feel, I taste like it is. <laughs> the second thing would, would simply be this. Eat for, eat for fuel rather than for feeling. Eat for fuel rather than for feeling. So God made natural, natural things, the plants of the earth. And then later on he said, oh, by the way, you can go ahead and eat meat. I heard somebody say that if God didn't want us to eat meat, that he wouldn't have made animals taste so good. And you can send, if you're, you can send emails to Pastor Steve if you didn't like that. But, <laughs> but let's eat for fuel, not our feelings. And let's eat the stuff that God made, mostly. And cut down on the stuff that he didn't make. Sleeping, number two, sleeping. Let's get on to this. Now we, we got through the hard one. Now we're going to talk about the fun one, sleeping. But listen to this. We are, are sleep-deprived. The National Sleep Foundation, did you know that was a thing? Um, yeah, guess who's paying for that? You are. The National <laughs> Sleep Foundation. The amount of sleep that we get as a people has dropped 20% over the last 100 years. 
among kids and teenagers, it has dropped 85 minutes per night since 1942. You say, why does that matter? It matters because in adults, when we don't sleep, we get drowsy. When kids don't sleep, they actually get hyperactive. I know we don't see either of those going on in our world today, but you say, well, what, what happened? Why are, why are we sleep deprived? Think about it. A hundred years ago, why did our sleep start falling a hundred years ago? Back to rhythms, back to rhythms. So God made days and seasons and years. And so normally for thousands of years, our ancestors, when the sun went down, guess what they did? They went to sleep when the sun came up. Guess what they did? They woke up and so they were living, their their body was living in natural harmony and in rhythm which with the way that God created it. But then we created light and so we stayed up longer than we probably should. And then we not only created light, we created this thing called blue light. So blue light comes off of your devices. So one of the worst things, if you're not sleeping well, one of the worst things that you could be doing is looking at your phone or looking looking at your iPad, and it's kind of a catch-22, right? Because you're laying in bed, I can't sleep, what do you do? You grab your phone, blue light, that actually tricks your body into thinking that the sun is still up, and so you're mentally tired, you're emotionally exhausted, but you're tricking your body into being awake. And you say, well, why does this all matter? Well, your body knows that it's not sleeping, so your body goes into emergency mode. Your body's thinking something is wrong. So think again, uh, a thousand years ago, what are, are we being attacked by a bear what's happening are we at war and so your body goes into this fight or flight response three things happen during that fight or flight response number one your heart rate rises number two your blood pressure rises and then number three you want quick energy what is quick energy sugar do you see how do you see how all of this works together and it can work for good but it can work against you too so now you're laying in bed you're watching the 40th thing on fixing your sink on YouTube and now all of a sudden you're craving the cinnamon toast crunch and you're down eating eating sugary cereal like all of this stuff right these cycles This is what happens, but let me encourage you with these things. These are what happens when you get proper sleep, when you get proper sleep. Number one, your mind connects things in patterns, and this fuels creativity. So during the day, you're learning, you're gathering information, thinking of all of those as like dots in your mind. When you're you're asleep, your brain, this is how God wired us and put you together. I think it's so cool. Your brain begins to connect the dots. And, and that is why sometimes after a good night's sleep, you wake up and you have a good idea. You wake up and you have a gut feel. There's a decision that you've been wrestling over. You go to sleep, you wake up and you're like, I think I should do that. That's because your brain is at work connecting all of this information. The second thing is your minds transfer what you have learned during the day into long-term memory. How many of you like memory? Me too. How many of you find that sometimes that it fails you more often than you would like, right? But you, while you're sleeping, um, have, you ever, have you ever looked at your device in the morning and say this phone failed to back up? because it was not connected to power, right? That's what happens when we don't sleep. Our minds don't back up. Our minds, so now you're living your Tuesday, not just with the pressures of Tuesday, but with the stresses of Monday. And then you don't sleep Tuesday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday because your mind, God designed your mind to flush those things and to begin to store some of those things in long-term memory while you sleep. I'm telling you, you're going to have the best nap ever this afternoon. Jesus is at work in your nap in Jesus' name. Number three, this is this is so cool. When you are sleeping, your mind cleanses itself physically. Did you know that there is a fluid that physically washes toxins out of your brain when you're sleeping? Like, come on, Jesus, you're washing those toxic thoughts. You're washing those toxic emotions. You're washing away those toxic words. And all I am doing is sleeping. 
Like, that's, that's pretty cool. The fourth thing, our energy levels are restored and replenished. And then number five, we dream. And dreaming actually helps you cope and adapt emotionally and reduces stress. Even when you dream about hard things, have you ever dreamed about, like, you're dealing with something hard in your life and you dream about that? That's actually one of the ways that your mind and your body copes with that because you're walking through it, you're replaying it in your mind, and you would say, Oh, that's bad. It's not bad because you're walking through it mentally, but your body is not releasing the chemicals, those fight or flight chemicals. So it's actually building up tolerance in your body to deal with difficult things. Come on. Like, does Jesus not know what he's doing when he made us and put us all together? And when the Bible says things like uh, he blesses us with sweet sleep in Proverbs, this is what is happening to us. This is what is happening to us. Here's the third thing is, is simply this, moving, moving. So eating according to God's rhythms and sleeping according to God's rhythms and moving or staying active. There's a professor of medicine at the Mayo Clinic who says this, sitting is more dangerous than smoking and is more treacherous than parachuting. We are sitting ourselves to death. The chair is out to kill us. I know you want to stand back up to worship right now, but that's just what he says. And listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to turn everybody into uh, marathon runners. I'm not trying to turn in everybody into uh, to, to professional athletes. Here's what I would encourage you in all of these things. Can we take one step? Can all of us just take one step? Don't let the devil beat you up over this. Don't let the devil overwhelm you of thinking, well, I've got to go from this to this in one leap. Remember, what, what is hope? What is hope? Hope is, I believe that tomorrow can be better than today. I'm going to take personal responsibility, and I'm going to take my next step. So can I just ask you this, in the area of eating, what is your next step? Maybe it's less soda and more water. Maybe it's cutting down on sugar. What is your next step? next step as it pertains to sleeping. So moving, the more you move, the better that you sleep. The less blue light, the better you sleep. What's your next step to sleep better? And what is your next step when it comes to moving, to being active? I would encourage you with this. Just find, try to find something you enjoy and do that. So if you think that the Stairmaster was an invented by Satan himself, don't do the Stairmaster. Like, find something you enjoy or do it, but like one of the, one of the definitions definition of discipline, right? Discipline is doing the things I don't want to do, so I get to do the things that I do want to do. So discipline is when we did all of those air squats yesterday, all of those air squats. And I know this is why it's good that we work out together, because in my mind, this is my form in my mind. And then when I see myself in a mirror, I'm like, yeah, like that's my, that's my air, that's my air squat. But so we do things at discipline, but but I would encourage you, find something that you enjoy. Walking, hiking, running, biking, swimming, tennis, pickleball. Pickle, pickleball, I don't even know what it is. My dad loves it, and apparently it's really popular, so play pickleball. Um, cro CrossFit, jazzer size, mouser size, any size that you like, just find a size. Just find, find something that you enjoy doing three times a week, four times a week, and just get out, get outside or, or find a group of people. Find a tribe. There's way of running tribes and walking tribes and workout tribes. Find, uh, find a community to be, able to be able to do that with. Let me, Pastor, what are you, we're preaching about revival, and now you're telling me I can't eat fried chicken. Like, what's, what's, the, what's the connection here? Let's go all the way back to, to Daniel. So Daniel in the Old Testament, Daniel was, was, so he was in Babylon, right? So he's in a culture that's very hostile to the things of God. And Daniel is used by God to, to pray, even when it was illegal. Daniel was used to, to stand up. Daniel was used to, to bring revival in a culture that was so hostile to the things of God. And that's what I love about praying for revival is that the conditions are determined by heaven, not by earth. So revival, revival can fall. 
So Daniel, remember, he was thrown in the lion's den and God shuts the mouths of the lions. Daniel use his, uses his gift in the gate. I love, I love that. So Daniel's gift, he was a prophet. He had a prophetic gift, but his gate was not the church or the, the temple. His gate was government. And so God used his gift, connected his gift to his gate. And then that's all through Daniel chapter 1 through 6. And then Daniel 7 and beyond, Daniel begins to operate in this amazing end times, last days, prophetic. Like God just begins to download dreams and begins to download vision. So like, can we agree that if somebody was used to bring revival and a move of God and operated in the power and the favor of God, like it was Daniel, right? Like amazing spiritual things happen through Daniel. But can we go all the way back to Daniel chapter one? So when Daniel and the Hebrew boys were taken into captivity and they were being trained for these positions, remember what kind of food they brought Daniel? They brought him the royal food, all the rich food, all the fatty food. And Daniel said, I'm sorry, I actually can't eat this. So for 10 days, if you'll just test me, if you'll bring me vegetables and water, and then just check on me after the end of 10 days. And this is what the Bible says. At the end of 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away the fried chicken and oak, fried okra and gave them vegetables and said, you know Daniel's friends were mad at him. You know they were. But can I throw this out? What if the capacity of Daniel to be able to hold the spiritual outpouring that God wanted to do through Daniel was what if what if his physical body, God was setting his physical body and getting his physical body in, in order to hold what God was doing? What if part of getting ready for the move of God that he wants to do in your life, in your business, in your family, in this church and in our community is us living in rhythm with the way God designed us to live so that we can have the capacity to carry the fire. When fire comes, I don't want to I don't want to burn out. I don't want to be like Elijah. I want to be able to carry the fullness of the fire. With heads bowed and eyes closed, Would you allow the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit just to wash over you right now? Not in a condemning way, but just in an encouraging way. And when you say, Holy Spirit, what's one step that I can take in my eating, in my sleeping, in my moving to get ready to carry? God, I want to carry your fire. I want to be a I want to be a carrier of revival. So help me to prepare myself physically for what you want to do spiritually. Because we're whole. We're whole in Jesus' name. If there's somebody within the sound of my voice today that you would say, Pastor, the enemy's been after me. I feel fractured. My thoughts feel fractured. I can't concentrate. I can't focus. My emotions feel feel fractured. I believe the Holy Spirit is here right now, and he wants to bring wholeness to you. And so if that's you, if you feel fractured, would you just lift a hand and say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Would you pray for me all across this auditorium? Pastor, that's me. My mind feels fractured. My emotions feel fractured. I got you. You can put your hands down. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray I don't understand it all, but how you designed our bodies to work and that fluid that washes over our brains during the night. This is a strange prayer. I've never prayed it before. I pray that that would increase tonight. never got emotional praying for somebody to sleep good before. But 
I pray that when you lay your head down, your mind wouldn't be filled with the worry and what the devil's saying and what other people are saying, but your mind would be cleansed by the word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, would wash over your mind, would wash over your heart and your emotions in the name of Jesus and that you would be whole and healed in every area of your life. If there's somebody here that say, would say, Pastor, I've been trying to do those other things, but I've been trying to do them without Jesus. And today, I know that my life won't work until I give my life to Jesus. If that's you, would you just acknowledge that with a raised hand? Say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my heart to Jesus. I'm not living for Jesus, but I want to give my life to Jesus. Would you just pray that prayer after me as I pray it out loud? Just say, Jesus, I surrender. I give my heart to you. I give my mind to you. I give my soul to you, my strength to you. I ask that you forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and help me to live wide awake to the love of God and fully alive to my purpose. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen. Hey, I hope I didn't ruin your lunch. Just eat a vegetable and then you can have a little piece of cake as you continue to love Jesus and change the world. I hope you enjoyed the service today. And if you made a decision to follow Jesus, we would love to know. All you have to do is text ALIVE to 94000. We have some resources we'd love to give you as you begin your journey of following Him. Well, it's the end of service. Lee, you know what that means? Food. It's time to eat. I'm hungry. Yeah. What do you want? Mm -hmm. What do you want? Chicken. Chicken? Or eggs. Eggs. Yes. Eggs? I mean, I always eat eggs. I usually don't want eggs, but I feel like you could do breakfast. Breakfast? For lunch? Why not? I mean, I like breakfast. Yeah. I eat it every day. I could do a waffle or a French toast. I eat breakfast for lunch every day. A good bowl of cereal. I like me some cinnamon toast crunch. How come cereal is not called a soup? Um, I don't know. I could eat soup right now. What makes a soup a soup? I don't know. I think... It just has to have liquid, like a broth. So does milk count as a broth? Does it have to be boiled first? I don't know. Aren't there cold soups? Yeah, but maybe you boil it first. If you don't cook it? And then chill it, and then it's a soup. I, have... I feel like you might have to boil something to make it considered soup. I... But I don't know. I could be wrong. Why not just call cereal a soup? I think we do it. Let's have some breakfast soup. Let's have some soup for breakfast. Do I really? You know what I'm in the mood for? What'd you have last night for dinner? I had some soup at midnight. Look, I got bored. I was hungry. I went into the pantry and I just poured myself a bowl of soup, you know, and just drank that. Does what that, what kind of soup? That, that sounds more healthy. What soup. kind of soup did you have? Frosted flakes. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, eat your soup for breakfast. <laughs> it makes it sound healthier. Kind of. So be Unless healthy. you're eating like oatmeal. Have a bowl of soup. Is oatmeal soup? This. There's no broth. Do you, I no. don't think you need broth to be a soup, just liquid. Listen. That's broth. Nobody knows how soup works. I think I want Mexican. Do they have soup? Yeah. How about breakfast soup? <sighs> Maybe.